I'm, my, my throat is like I, I I used to be I was sick for like a week and so like I'm gonna be clearing my throat during this episode. I just wanna I just wanna <laughs> let you know. Give a heads up. Quick heads up. Um, yeah, I have a I have a good topic. I feel I've, I actually came with a good idea and I actually planned. Yeah, you're like ahead in the show here. Um, I wanted to talk about growing on Instagram, growing your following on Instagram. And as I started taking notes about this, I realized how almost identical it is to the weight loss process. Yeah. Yeah. Do you Would you agree? I mean, you went over briefly the similarities, but even without remembering everyone that you had on your list, it's like almost like it's there are a lot of things in life that are like the same setup. And so once you can learn how to do the setup in one place, you can apply that. You know, we're always talking about that, that you're like, oh, I applied what I learned from weight loss. And probably without even realizing it until you were like, wait a second, this is exactly what you do. Like I applied it here and now I can just take the exact same thing and apply it here, you know? Right, right. And it, as we're sitting here, I'm like 10 followers away from 10,000. Yeah. (laughs) So it's a bit serendipitous that we're talking about this. Um, because that was like my, my goal for the year. I set a goal. Yeah. How much I wanted to grow my Instagram this year. And that was my, that was my goal. And we're only like a quarter into the year. So, um, I'm probably, we're probably, I'm probably going to hit it while as we're speaking right now. Yeah. Which is cool. Okay. So I'm going to, I made a list of like, what, <clears throat> what are some good tips to grow on Instagram? And as we go down this list, let's just talk about how it applies to weight loss too. Okay. So the first thing I put here was to pick a niche. Or a niche. Or niche. How do you even say that? <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure there is a right way. I think it's niche. Niche or niche. I, I don't say know. niche. There's, Google I would definitely probably don't say us. niche. I, yeah. I don't I, I don't think we've actually nailed this quite well, picking an, a niche. I, I you know, our niche is obviously the keto diet, and that's still kind of broad, but would you say I have a niche a niche. What's your what's your niche? I mean my niche is keto moms. Keto moms. Yeah. I mean, it could probably niche down more than that, but that does not mean everybody I'm speaking to is a mom or is even keto. I hear that. I'm hearing that more and more. I feel like where it's like, oh, I don't even do keto, whatever. So a lot of people will get really scared about that because what they feel like is if I choose this, then all of the people I'm leaving out. And it's like, no, you're not leaving anybody out. You just, your marketing and how you talk to people and your focus is directed at a certain group of people. And for the most part, that is the majority of the clientele that I work with. But um, it's just because there's a saying, when you're talking to everybody, you're talking to nobody. And when you're just like, weight loss, yeah. diet, it's like, yeah, I mean, everyone can kind of relate to it. But a lot of the people that I work with are like, yes, exactly. That is me. Yeah. And then other people are like, yes, exactly. That is close <laughs> to me. <laughs> so it's not, I think the real re- the resistance that people have to that is if I say this is who I help, there are going to be people, people who say that isn't me. But the hope is that there are so many people that are like, that is me to the T, that it just makes how you talk about things and how you share things and the way you speak really hit home to a certain group of people. Yeah. I mean, once you, once you pick a niche, it really changes the way you actually make your, what your content, what you're going to post. Well, and you have a niche. I mean, parents. Yeah, sure. It's, and you're, your niche won't always be you, but a lot of the time it will be. And so like we are two busy parents who work from home, have a lot of balls in the air and are still able to lose weight, stay keto, do all of that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, ideally those are the people we're helping. Those are the people we're speaking to. Right. So now say how it has to do with weight loss. Well, you have to pick a way of eating. Yes. You have to pick a specific way that you like to eat. For us, it's keto. It could be anything for anyone. Yeah. But when you want to lose weight, you have to like kind of strategize and pick. And what what I want to add about this one specifically is there isn't a right choice. Yeah. And that's another way people are like, because no one wants to pick a niche because they're like, what if I pick the wrong niche? Like, do not act like you're married to this forever. You can always change it. You can always change it. But people just feel like once I decide, I mean, and that's just our innate resistance to making decisions ever. And the only reason we don't want to make a decision is because we don't want to make the wrong one. Yeah. So when it comes to picking a niche, same drama. When it comes to picking a diet, a way of eating, same drama. And a lot of the time what that causes us to do is like just pick different ones and we keep switching and switching and switching. But really, ideally, pick a niche 
and try it out for how long would you say that people need to like give it a go if they were to pick a niche? Uh, I don't know, like 30 days. Just, you know, feel it out. I would say even longer than that. And I would say even longer for um, a, a way of eating that you're choosing. Try something, feel it out, and you'll know if it's wrong. Yeah. You'll you'll know. The second thing I have on this list is <clears throat> your your content has to solve a problem. You have to... It has to be solving a problem for people and you have to help people. Yeah. Because otherwise, when they land on your profile, they're, you have three seconds before they decide whether they're going to follow you or not. Mm-hmm. When they land on your profile, what do they see that brings value to them? Yeah. They should be able to get a quick overview of like, what are we dealing with here? What can I expect? I mean, that's really what it is. What can I, what are my expectations? Yeah. And if your content is like isn't solving a problem, then there isn't really a reason for anyone to follow you. Like we can, we can go through some examples. Like if you, if you're curating a, a a grid of keto food, the problem you're solving is you're giving people ideas of what food to eat. Mm -hmm. Right. Or if you're giving weight loss tips, you know, that's clearly solving a problem and the, the problem you want to solve should be related to your specific niche. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I, if I actually nailed it on how this relates to weight loss. Um, I put solve a problem, help people. And what is your, your reasoning? What's your why? Okay. I guess that's the, in, well, in and your diet loss, should solve problems too. Yes. It should, the way your way of eating should have the ability to help you address where things weren't working with maybe something else you tried or where things aren't working currently, like what's not working here. So, I mean, I would say that the, your way of eating will, I mean, I can tell you lots of problems that my... <laughs> My change of eating solved. Yeah. Next thing I have I have on the list is be consistent. And it's the same for Instagram and losing weight. How important is consistency, would you say? It's the most important. Really? Absolutely. So what do you think is, what do you, what do you, as far as Instagram goes, what do you see as consistent? Showing up consistently. I mean, Every to, day? To, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm all, I'm, I show up every single day. I, my posting every single day isn't quite as tight as it used to be, but I'm all, there's always a story post. Like I, there hasn't been a day in four years where I, where I have just ghosted even like, like oh, I'm taking a, <laughs> I'm taking a, a social media <laughs> break. I haven't even done that. Like I've been on that page every single day. And I think it's just because it's like, you do show people what to expect from you and I just think the consistency means like I know where to find her. I know what to expect from her. I know, I know she's going to be here. I know she's going to be here. I know she's going to be. And and I'm sure people could say what they expect from me. I know she's going to be sharing where she's at in the journey. I know she's going to be sharing any tips that she's gleaming from where exactly she is at right now. I know that she's going to post her food. I know she's going to post coaching like that. I show my people what to expect and you're doing the same. Yeah, I think just the consistent... I- when you have an audience, it's very important for them to know what to expect. Well, an inconsistency will will affect how many people see your stuff, and yep. yeah. you have to you have to show up because we're also working within the terms of a platform that has its own algorithm and has its own way of doing stuff. And if you're like every three days, maybe I'll post a story, I'll I'll make a post in my feed once every four days, but then sometimes three times a day, and then sometimes once every. It's just the consistency of just like showing up daily and you get to decide what that looks like because some people will say post three times a day and some and for some other people that's just not right for them whatever but whatever you're doing do it consistently even if that looks different than someone else's and that applies to weight loss too if you're not being consistent with your with your eating you're not going to see results yeah like i'm being consistent on mondays yeah but then i take tuesday wednesday thursday off and then i'm like i'm it has to be an overall consistency where more often than not you are showing up and that's online or in your weight loss journey. I'm showing up more and more and more. The, the, and the more consistent you are, the more benefits there are, the more the more progress you'll see. Yeah. <clears throat> this next bullet goes along with consistency. I put post three to five times a day, which I just I just recently learned this, that... <clears throat> You aren't going to grow your Instagram without posting to your feed. That is where your Instagram is going to grow. It's not, it will not grow from your stories. And what I've heard is your stories is where you build relationships with people because it just gives an inside look into your life that is just not 
possible in my opinion unless it's a IG live or something like that in your feed it's just different ways of connecting with people but in order to find new people it's not happening in your stories that's how you make relationships and there's the dms and there's the reactions right. and there's the interactions that are happening in your stories whereas on your feed like that's where you find new people that's where you show people what they can get from you <laughs> what they can yeah. what they can why you're valuable for them to spend their time <laughs> engaging with and looking yeah, I, at and- i think i think the three to five times a day could seem overwhelming for a few reasons people probably have hang-ups about like well what the hell am i gonna post what's good enough five times a day and also isn't that annoying for my followers mm-hmm. and i heard this analogy from from brock on instagram and most of the stuff i've learned from him so i should probably shout him out brock 11 johnson he's an instagram expert go follow him you're gonna learn a lot but basically his analogy was like if somebody knocked on your door your front door Five times a day, and they handed you a hundred dollar bill every time. Would you be? Would you get annoyed? Yeah, of course not. No, you, would, you, you mean would, it, it's saying like I'm here giving you value. Is exactly, that what that is? Exactly. Okay. But if somebody knocked on your door five times a day trying to sell you something, you would be annoyed as hell. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the same analogy as like posting three to five times a day of something that is valuable, giving valuable, not yes. selling. So per you're not going to annoy yeah. people if you're doing it right. You're not going to annoy them. The other hang up is like, well, I don't, I can't even think of two posts. What do I, what do I post? I think my, my advice for that is, is you don't really have to figure it out right off the bat. Like you don't have to, you, if, if you're trying to grow your Instagram, you don't have to wake up tomorrow and, and figure out five posts to post a day. It's, I, my minimum is two. I, I try for three or four and I've just, over time, I've just really learned and figured it out. And I figured out what my, what my content pie is. I'll post like 30, 30% of my feed is like a food photo. I'll try and post one tweet post, something inspirational once or twice a day. And then I got my reels. Like I'll post like weight loss tips and reels or like a food reel. And so like you have to figure out your, what your cadence is mm-hmm. as far as like well, and what I guess, you're going to post and the value you're going to bring. Do you have on your list about planning? Planning. Is that on your list? Planning what? Well, as far as the relationship between how you be successful and grow on Instagram and how you... No, I don't. No. While you were talking earlier, I had that thought. And I think that's this, that's what you're talking about right now. Yeah. It's like, you got to make a plan because you've got to have a target of where you're going. And we're finding that in all areas of our lives, especially like um, productivity, like getting things done. And you have to do that whether you're growing on Instagram, you have to do it in your weight loss journey. You have to have a target. You have to know what am I even doing? Because when you're just shooting shit at the wall and you're like, you couldn't even give the answer of how many times are you posting on Instagram? How many times are you posting a week? Do you have that data? Do you Are you paying attention enough? So I think when it comes to Instagram, what you have done is you have planned out in your head or maybe somewhere where like, this is what I will provide on Instagram. I have a plan. And yeah. because I have that plan, all I got to do is follow that plan. If uh-huh. I know I'm posting a reels a day have i made a reels today and then the same thing we're always talking about number one most momentum giving tool is making a plan with your food yeah it's just it's the only way to be able to check if what you're doing is working is to know what you're doing and the only way to know what you're doing is if you're keeping track of it somehow so i think both of those things are and you also made a plan as far as what your goal was. Like there is forethought before you are taking action when it comes 100%. to your Instagram. You didn't just like grow because you were like, oh, I'm going to post more. You yeah. were like, why? You know exactly what you're going to do, why you're going to do it, why it's going to be helpful. You're, oh, I think you're going to get to this about an analytics and yeah. stuff. But like you, you are 100% of the way you've grown has been the planning. And the same thing was for me and how I grew mine. And I have, I have a target. I made a target. When I first started this year, I was at 3,900 followers and I made a target for the year. Well, and it's interesting. You had that goal and then you broke it down to, okay, how do we do it? Right. Then you, your brain, it's funny because you set the goal and then your brain went to work on, okay, how? Yep. And you also didn't have many thoughts standing in your way, preventing you from believing you can do, could do it. And I'm curious what that was about. That I couldn't do it? You did, You weren't sitting around being like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. You you came out the gate pretty confident. And I'm wondering what thoughts, what were you thinking about that goal that made you be like, just go to work on it? Dude, I, I just, it, it, I think it stemmed from all of this stuff I'm learning about, about growing and, and what I didn't know. And like a lot of, a lot of light bulbs went off. Mm-hmm. And I, I knew it. If I gave myself a year to hit 
like 10K. I knew like if I just focus on it, I could probably do it. And what what a helpful thought that isn't like rock solid. If I learn how to do this, I'm pretty sure I can do it. Yeah. Like it was just, <laughs> you guys don't need this thought that I can do this no matter what. But just the fact that you were like, I don't see any reason why I can't do this. And I'm going to give myself ample time to do it. And I'm going to believe there's nothing really standing in my way. I've just got to figure out how to do it. And that's how Ryan approaches a lot of things that he wants to accomplish. It's just like, I know that I can figure out how to do it. And it's thoughts like that. It isn't necessarily what he did, but it was like what he believes about himself when he sets goals is just like, yeah, I can definitely figure out how to do this. And then his brain went to work on, okay, find experts. <clears throat> what can you like? And I'm, he does. I'm really good at convincing myself I can figure things out. Yeah. That's my, like one of my number one skills. Yeah. I would say. And you can. Anyone can figure anything out. And what stands in most of our ways is like, I don't know how to grow an Instagram. Yeah. I don't know how to do that. I don't. And your brain's like, yeah, no, we don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Like, there's no way I could do that. And you, like, he's he's gone to work to prove that when you set a goal and then have um, helpful thoughts about it, there's nothing that'll stand in your way. And a lot of the time, what you will find is that you'll actually hit that goal much faster than you had planned. And it's yeah. all because you are not standing in your own way. You yeah. are really good at getting out of your own way. Yeah. I, I'm re I'm reassessing my goal now. My, yeah. my annual goal. Yeah. I don't know what it should be, but something different because I just hit my goal yeah. and it's April 15th. So. I love it. Uh, then this next one is one of my favorites because I mean... It, I don't know if people do this or not, but I put down, look at your insights and adjust. And this mm -hmm. is so applicable to growing on Instagram and losing weight. It couldn't be more applicable. So every time I make a post on Instagram, I look at that post's insights probably within the first 24 hours. I probably look at it 30 times. I'm constantly looking at my insights because it gives you, it gives you feedback it, and it tells you, was this post valuable? And, and your brain could spin out on this. Mm -hmm. Your brain could tell you, people don't like my shit. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stop. Yeah, nobody cares. Or or you can look at it as like, okay, what can I do different What could time? I do to make this more valuable? What yeah. could I do next time that will resonate with why, more people? Why, why, why didn't this go? Curiosity over everything. <laughs> Dude, it's like, it's so applicable. You, I, and I'm going to get into the algorithm. Okay. That needs to be discussed. But... Looking at your insights is going is like your you should be your main navigation for growing on Instagram. It's it's direct feedback for telling you what to post. If your if your posts aren't doing well, try to try to try something else. You have to be curious and you have to be flexible, flexible and yeah. you have to experiment. Adaptable. You, you have to be willing to like throw shit at the wall and be like, this is this might flop. Ryan, this will probably are you flop. saying you have to be willing to fail? Yeah. Willing to be sloppy? Willing to be messy? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that that will ask a lot of a lot of people mentally. Yeah. Because this is the thing. Your brain will answer whatever question you ask it. And most of us are going, why don't people care about what I have to say? Yep. Why, why aren't I better at this? Why don't I ever know what to post? Why am I always coming up short? Yeah. Why am I failing it? Like those are the questions rather than how could I make this more appealing? The people who that did respond, what did they have to say? Why did it resonate with these people? How can I make this better? How can I, whatever questions you ask your brain, your brain will answer. Ask better questions when it comes to doing stuff where you're like, oh, I don't know. This is kind of scary. I'm going to see how it goes and I'm not going to let any of the feedback or any of the insights or any of the analytics dictate anything about my self-worth as a person. It's just feedback. It's just data that I am so glad to have because it's going to help me get better. 100%. And I don't know how that has anything to do with the scale, <laughs> but... <laughs> or life in general or anything you're trying to do. Yeah. You have to collect the data and decide how do I use this to grow? Yep. I mean... It, grow my I, Instagram I don't even know. or grow myself. I don't even know if we even need to go into the how it c compares to weight loss because you're basically just saying the same exact thing. It's the exact same thing. It's but that's, that's thing. why when people are like, oh, I use these tools and I use the way that I think and I use the way that I collect data to change this other part of my life. Like it's because these skills are skills that go across the board. It's like you have to be willing to do stuff, to think helpful thoughts, to do helpful things, to collect feedback and adjust as needed. And most of us, we aren't ever doing the stuff so we don't have the feedback so we can't make the changes it's all it's all part of it you have to be 
thinking helpful thoughts so that you do helpful things and then finding out, is this working? Right. And most of us are so scared to do anything that you you don't have the feedback, you don't have the data to make any choices moving forward because you're so afraid to fail. But failing, is ha data. have you failed? Have some of your posts failed? Have they bombed? Have 80% they... of them flop. <laughs> flop is the word he uses. <laughs> That's what we should start calling it. Like rather than failures, like, oh, that was a flop. <laughs> that was a floppy day. Oh, that yeah. was a floppy post. Yeah, floppy. Where it's like, I whatever, like it. our words do matter. And oh my gosh, people hate the word fail. fail. I spent failure. I spent like an hour on one of those carousel posts, yeah. the swipeable posts. And I was like, dude, this is going to slap. This is going to slap. This is going to slap. Yeah. I posted it. It flopped. Crickets. Yeah. It flopped. And I'm like, Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is fascinating data. You just have to you have to you have to lighten the energy on it because otherwise we get stuck in the like people hate me. Like that's yeah. where we take it. It's not even like it goes from like people hate what I have to say. People hate what I make. People hate my creations. People hate me. Like we use the data to destroy ourselves and we've got it's a very good skill to learn to be able to collect data and even if the initial reaction is oh that took me a lot of time that one stings because we're we've been doing stuff lately where we're like oh that doesn't feel good <laughs> but like also acknowledging like we're still alive we're still yeah. going to be fine it's going to be okay but getting better at that skill to like let it sting for a second and then go to work to improve is like practice that we spend so much time giving our energy to shit that doesn't matter and isn't helpful but when you give your energy to like i'm gonna let it hurt a little bit i'm gonna let it sting i'm gonna let it flop because that that's the only way i'm gonna know what I, what do i even need to know because i've been t i swear i'm going blue in the face talking about perfectionism on instagram and yeah. in my thing and, and that's the same thing it's like we don't do anything and you think it's keeping you safe. You think it's preventing you from failing at something, but it's preventing you from learning what you even need to do. You're not doing anything because you're so scared because you're avoiding discomfort, but perfectionism is so uncomfortable. Like we've got to get used to just throwing ourselves in and letting it sting and then maybe stepping out and maybe collecting our, our self again and then doing it again and again and again and again. Let it flop. Let it flop hard. Okay, so this last one, is my favorite and we're going to talk about the algorithm because a lot of people love to blame the algorithm mm -hmm. on you know i have i have twenty thousand followers and, and instagram shows it to five percent mm -hmm. right and so that's because of the algorithm right yeah there's something you need to know about the algorithm and you and and you don't need to the algorithm is very 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 complex we will never understand all the details of the algorithm, and yeah. nor do we need to. What you need to know is the, main, the one main overarching goal of Instagram is to keep people in the app as long as possible. That is their main goal because the more they do that, the more money they can make from advertisers. That's their goal is to make money. Mm -hmm. So they want to keep people in the app. So it should be your goal to keep people in the app. And what does that mean? Create engaging. They got to care about your shit. They got to care about your shit. You need to create engaging content. And this spans across everything you do. It can't just be not thought through. Yeah. You know what I mean? So basically what I'm trying to say is like, this is a harsh reality. It's not the algorithm's fault. It's your content. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be open to like that, that acceptance mm -hmm. and, and the possibility that like, you know, like st you stop blaming the algorithm. There's a lot of people out there doing it. Yeah. Oh, Instagram isn't showing my stuff to anybody. And yeah, there are a lot of intricacies involved in it. Cause like so many. sometimes like I have 135,000 followers on mine and like I had a post the other day that got like 200 likes Yeah, and it's, and it's fine. And sometimes it is the content. And then other times it's the fact that I haven't been consistent in posting. Like there are lots of things that go into it and you have to decide to care a lot to focus on that kind of stuff. And sometimes if I'm being honest, like my focus is on my coaching clients or yeah. my focus is on the podcast or my focus is just somewhere else where it's like, I'm not focusing on hitting shit hard on Instagram to make sure that my shit gets seen by lots of people. I'm one woman and I do my best to balance it all. But it is something that when you want to reach new people, you want to uh, your content to do well. It does take forethought it does take planning it does take being like all right 
we got to decide. And a lot of people, I think, just decide to like not care. And they're just like, yeah. whatever, it's too painful to care. And how is that similar to the scale, right? A lot of people are like, I just don't weigh myself because like it's just, it hurts me. It, it, it hurts too much to care. But sometimes like in these situations, caring is important because you want that feedback. You want to know how you can get better. And, and ultimately the why does run it. It's like, what's your purpose here? Like, I want to give value to as many people as possible. I want to help as many pe- people as possible. I want to reach as many people as possible. But it does take work. A lot of people look at the algorithm with a negative mindset, but it's ac- it actually is positive. What it's doing is it's protecting people. It's protecting your following from uh, invaluable content. Not invaluable, but stuff. Not unvaluable. Uh, yeah. Not valuable. Unva- not from shit they don't care about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What it does is it'll it'll take your post, it'll show it to ten percent of your following, and it'll it'll gather data. It'll be like, do people care about this? And it's like, oh, a lot of people care about this. Yes, and okay, then it'll show, show it, to, it more. to more people. That's what it's doing. It's saying, I don't want to show this to your entire following if it doesn't matter to them. Yeah, that's what it's doing. They're kind of like looking out for you. Yeah. But then what that means for you is you've got to adjust. So when you're doing stuff like talking at a camera and not using any subtitles, not telling like those yeah. kind of things, or you get on there and you're just talking at the camera for 16 little micro docs, <laughs> like people are just like, they, they are collecting feedback of people leaving your stories. People being like, ah, I don't care about this. Yeah. Ah, I don't want to hear about this. There's you navigation. Have to be quick, if you, can see you have to care about their time. They measure everything, bros. Yeah. Like there, there's insights on your stories and they're measuring if people skip, if people exit, if people back tap, if people tap on the poll, if people, and they are measuring everything. Yeah. And it's all going into some special equation yeah. that just goes, we know based off of all this feedback, how many people to show this to. Yeah. And if you start to see that slowly, slowly decrease, yes, it will come down to value, but it will also come down to consistency. It is about you. It can be a full-time job. <laughs> you know, it is. And so that's a lot of people. It's not just about like you have a creator account or you have a business account. You don't just get to like have one and grow your following and be successful. There is ongoing work that that goes into it, especially keeping it like vibe and high and reaching lots of people and getting, you know, the maximum reach that you can get. It requires work. What's the algorithm of weight loss? <sighs> What's the algorithm of weight loss? I mean, who you want me to give you the equation? It's like consistency plus planning. (laughs) The algorithm of weight loss is everything we've talked about in this podcast. It's about the consistency. It's about, you know, that Brene Brown quote about like the people that are talking shit. I am way paraphrasing here. Like the people (laughs) talking shit, like they're not in the arena. They're not out there getting their asses beat. They're not out there learning and failing and failing publicly and going back on what they said and learning new things and getting back out there and getting beat down again and all that kind of stuff. Like they're out, they're just sitting in perfectionism in the stands being like, you should do this. And it's like, no, you've got to get out there. You've got to get out there. You've got to be consistent. You've got to let things flop. You've got to try stuff and be like, ooh, that wasn't, that wasn't it. You've got to give yourself time. You've got to set goals. You've got to plan. All of that is the algorithm of weight loss. I love it. It was a cool episode for me. Yeah, Ryan was excited about this one. And it's been fun to watch him like, so give him the stats. You started the year at 39. I feel like it was lower than that. I started the year January 1st, 3,900. I'm rolling into 10K today. And that happened really quickly. And it also just kind of shows like, I feel like this is coming up a lot in my work lately. Like you guys, everybody is in such a rush to get successful and is in such a rush to lose their weight. But I need you guys to realize that like, the thing that slows you down the most is you. And that can be helpful or hurtful, but I feel like if you believe that the things that slow you down the most are outside of you, you have no power. So it's actually really empowering to believe the thing that slows you down the most is you. And what I mean by that is it's your thinking. It's your thoughts. It's what you tell yourself when something flops. It's what you tell yourself when things don't go the way you expected them to go. How long do you spin out in your head before you're back in the arena? That's the only thing making the difference. So you want speed. So what you do is you get restrictive and you go, you, you pull things tighter when really your speed is determined by how fast you are willing to fail and stand back up. The end, whether you're growing on Instagram, whether you're growing a business, whether you're losing your weight, whatever you are trying to create for yourself, if you guys want speed, which I know you all want, you want everything as fast as possible, Amazon Prime style, work on how you are slowing yourself down in your brain. 
and the story you tell about when things flop. Because that, that's how you pick up speed. You get, you get up faster. The end. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful. All right, guys.